Hi, my name is Ted and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to uh, stack your video uh, frames into Registacks. I am using version 6. Um, if you look at my desktop here, that was the image I created using my video that I shot. Now, I did use um, my Canon uh, 70D, which is a DSLR camera. Unfortunately, it shoots in a movie uh, format. Now the downside to that is this, when you go into Registax, when you select your file to upload, it only supports AVI and MPEG, which is really kind of sucky, but unfortunately that's what it is and there's no other option outside of, you know, you know, picture uh, frames itself. Now the sad thing about it is once I compress my movie peg file over to AVI and MPEG, or whichever one I decided, uh, during the compression and, and conversion, it kind of loses quality, unfortunately. Uh, but that's the downside to it. So as, I'm hoping at some point that Registax will upgrade this and have it to support uh, the MUI file format as well. It would be a lot nicer, especially when you get a really large frame, a video frame. But that's okay, though. Um, I did convert my file over to AVI, so here it is right here. And I'm going to kind of show you. I, I click I click on f show full image so you can see it, it is kind of choppy but it ain't too too bad per se now the reason why it is kind of choppy because I was using both my two times Barlow lens and my two times uh, teleconverter and I was also using a digital zoom uh, the Canon's built-in digital zoom which is three times to ten times which I left it on three times so you're talking basically four times the length of the telescope's focal length, which is a thousand, so it's four thousand millimeters. Now that's an awful lot, so naturally you start to lose, you get a little distortion as you start exceeding the telescope's uh, magnification limits, per se. As far as all the settings, I don't really change any of this. The only thing I changed was this, because I think when you first install it, it starts out at 70, I think. And uh, I think it's selected under best frames down here. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't really remember. But all I know is I keep this one checked because I do believe it is the better of the options. And and I think you'll see once you see my image. Uh, well, you've already saw the image. I just showed you the image from the beginning. But anyhow, the first part of this is once you import your video here, uh, as you can see, that's actually not a bad little image. I might just keep that one. But uh, what you can do is you can either just scroll through all the images to try to get the best image possible or the best frame. Uh, you can do it that way or you can use the little arrow key. And you want to get use, get one frame that's really good for, for the reference frame. I'm just going to scroll over to like here and just... There we go. That's actually really good. That's actually a nice one actually. Um, that's probably the clearest I'm going to get it. So anyways, after you get your frame selected, you go over to set appointments. Now for some reason, I do not know why it only sets up two um, even though I've changed this tons, dozens of times before, I just leave it like that and I just add my own. Now, someone told me when you're doing the align points, never put it on the outside of the uh, image because it, it always messes it up. Uh, I've never had any problems with that. I've always done it and it still came out really, really nice. So, um, And that's what I kind of do. And you can also even throw one on the little where the bands are. And then you set hit a line. Now this is a total of 3,776 frames, and it's going to pick, um, it's going to stack all those frames. But when it comes time to doing the limit, it's going to pick 80% of the best frames. So, and it'll set them aside so it can uh, stack those pretty much in the end. And I'm going to give you show you how you really how did you have the, the the process is really honestly is simple. I remember when I first started using this software and I was like, oh man, this is like kind of annoying and hard and complicated, but honestly it's it's really a simple procedure and it's like it's like once you get the hang of it, you do it a few times, it's like it becomes natural to you. And it's a real simple process. I'm not going to pause it because I'm I thought about just pausing it since it's going to take about another two minutes, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, actually, it's only going to take about 46 seconds. But uh, once that uh, stacks all, I'm sorry, lines all the frames, I'll show you how to go into the stacking process. Um, that's actually the easy part, believe it or not. And then we'll go into, at the end of this video, I'll show you how I uh, 
cut it up in Photoshop elements and then I do the final process in a program called TIFF and DFX which I believe is one of the best programs on the market. It's a simple program, um, it's relatively cheap and it, you can do so much a lot, you can do a lot with that program so okay it's at 86 percent here that should be a nice little image too so to work with and counting boom okay once it does all the aligning of the frames what you want to do is go to limit up here now it's going to give you all your align points that you set up now remember when you do the actual stacking part it's going to pick 80% of the frames what I like to do is go here to show stack graph and this kind of shows you all the frames there's actually going to there's stackable frames is up to 30 3020 of them but I'm going to move this down here to the midway point to about or like right there so it'll stack about 1705 frames after you do that set here you go to stack and then the process begins. It's going to go through all the stacking uh, motions. Um, it'll take about a minute here to do since I got a pretty fast computer. Um, if you if your computer's slower, it'll take a little longer. And plus, the more frames you stack, it'll take a lot longer. Um, but I'm really going to be doing only 1,700 frames, and um, like I said, I got a pretty decent computer per se, so it won't be that long. So I won't pause it. I'll just let it do its thing. Um, and once you get that image up here, then you'll go to the Wavelet tablet up there. And that will be where you start to do all the, the little sliders and, you know, adjusting the the sharpness and the contrast and, and things like that. And so it's, it's relatively, like I said, it's a real basic step. And it's honestly, believe it or not, once I... Did it a couple times i realized okay this is honestly the easiest software out there i mean i just wish they would change the the movie format so you don't have to transfer it over to abi which kind of you lose a lot when you do so but anyhow that's just going a lot faster than i thought so and we are gonna be done okay i can close this now i can show full image and as you can see the image got a lot clearer it's still a little blurry, but um, it's pretty sharp. So now you go to Wavelet. Now you can, once you adjust these, you can save your theme and you can always have it. I don't have one, oh, I do have one saved for Saturday. I can actually collect this. Once you save it, as you can see, it, it definitely changed it a lot better and it moved all the sliders to where it needs to be because that's how I have it set. So that's actually pretty good. So next thing you want to do is go to histogram um, you don't have to do this but I do it I cut off a little bit you can always uh, reset it if something goes wrong and what that does is it refines it a lot better then I go to gamma darken it up over here nope too much there that's good there then I go to RGB align, hit estimate. Okay, it didn't really change anything, which is fine. Then I go to RGB balance, I hit auto balance. And not too bad. I'll leave it like that. Then I go to denoising. And as you can see, it cleaned it up a little more. And then after you hit all set, you hit up here and you hit do all. And it's going to basically do everything, you know, you clicked on for it to do. And then you can always adjust the brightness and stuff here. I don't mess with this. I always do it in either Photoshop or TIFF and DFX. So then what I do is I go to resize the image. And I go, since this was 19... 20 by 1080 originally before the the conversion uh, this one you have to do it by the controls you can't go to 1080 you have to do it manually um, the other one you can just type it in and that gives you a full frame that your DSLR was set at okay and there you have your image right now this is just the step one 
Then I'll save my image. We're going to call this one um, number one. That's what we're just going to do it as, so it would be easier to do it that way. Save. Okay. I can close this out now. I'm going to leave this open in case I have to redo anything. You can also realign everything with the process frame. and it, it, The more you do it, sometimes it, it can make the image a lot better. Sometimes it can make it worse. Um, so here's the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in Photoshop Elements. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to flip this... Uh, image to look normal like it would be if you were just like looking at a, a picture of Saturn. Now you can go in to rotate the image but when you do it, it it messes up the whole background. So what I like to do is I like to cheat it and I do this. Go to edit, copy. I know this is a cheesy way of doing it and then I do my clone stamp and then I get rid of this. Again I know this is kind of cheesy but it's all good. Then I click that and say edit, paste, and then I just turn my thing like that. There you go. Now I can also pull this out and enlarge it, but I'm not gonna mess with it now because it looks pretty good right there. And then I'll save this as JPEG. And I'm going to save it as a copy. And there you have it. So then my final program is Tiffin DFX. And this is the copied image right there. I just drop and drag it. I go to image first and then I go to sharpen. Now they have 10 levels of sharpen. I'm going to go 10. As you can see it really cleaned it up nicely. Then I go to denoise here and I select the denoise 1. And then I go to if it if it needs to be sharpened more I can always sharpen it again. I'll go to 3 this time and then I hit the sky filter. Now as you can see it really made the bands thin, but I usually go to select the 1. And then I come up into perimeters and I go down to about 137 and then double click on it and there you have it. Now the nice thing about this program is you can change it. You can go into color and have it uh, auto contrast and stuff or you can do black and white. Um, you can do the curves in here as well. Um, you, have, you can do your levels. Uh, you can go to gradient tints. You can do dual grads. You can change the colors. Uh, you can go to gels. I mean, you can really do a lot with this program. It's really, really amazing. So um, you even have uh, X-ray. So it's kind of cool. So you can do a lot with it. Anyhow, and that's going to be that. So I'm just going to save it under the copy one that I just did. And there you have it. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I wanted to show you this too really quick, actually, now that I'm here. Um, if you want to zoom into this, you can go to Lens. And you can go to uh, Close-Up. Now, I wouldn't go too much because when you start getting too close, it distorts the image. Or it also, when you get too close, um, it's it'll make somehow makes a, a, a line in between the middle of it. I don't know why it does that. But you can go a little bit where it won't be too distorted. So... And there you have it. And then when you save it, it'll be under, it'll be a lot closer. Save as, I'll say copy one. That's the first one. And copy one. It's, it's a little closer, even though you can't really see. Oops. Sorry. That's the... And I'll open up copy one. I mean, you can see it's a little bigger. Not too much. But as you get as you bring it in more, it's going to be very distorted. So the best thing to do is just keep it out. 
you know, farther out, you know, the normal, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't zoom in in too much, so. And that's pretty much it, guys, and that's how I did my process. Uh, again, oh, the other thing, if you're doing your video, um, this is the video, I'll just show you the video really quick here. Sometimes if the video is really, really shaky, um, this was actually, it was worse than this. And what I did was I took the, uh, in Sony, I used the, uh, the add-on called uh, Sony Stabilize. And it stabilized it a lot because it was really shaky because I think it was very windy that day. Uh, so if you have Sony Vegas or any kind of editing software that you can maybe stabilize a little bit, it would be great. So, um, And there you have it. That's Registack 6. We stacked Saturn. Um, we stacked a total of... Um, 1,706 frames, and that's what we came up with. And this was pretty much it right there, and that is the image we stacked. So it's really simple, um, and I think really anybody can do it once they start applying themselves and doing it a few times. Once you do it a few times, you'll be you'll be good to go. Anyhow, uh, that's pretty much it. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have clear skies because I have rainy skies right now. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will have better uh, nights than I do. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and have a good night.